First of all, what is a two-state solution? There are two ways to present it. One says the two-state solution. This is the, the expression used by most people around the world, and including the Palestinians. They say, and also the Israeli left, by the way. Uh, they say the two-state solution. What exactly does it mean? Two states, there's a Palestine and Israel. That's the, uh, the idea of uh, a two-state solution. When Israelis and Americans, or the American administration until recently, spoke about two-state solution, they spoke about two states for two peoples solution. One state for the Palestinian people, the other state is the state for the Jewish people. But here lies a very, a very big problem. In the conflict between the Jewish national movement, Zionism, and the Palestinian national movement, there is some sort of a disequilibrium. The Jews, and it's a little bit strange disequilibrium, the Jews, once the Palestinians declared themselves as, as a people, they had some difficulties accepting it. But at a certain point, they said, OK, you are a people. You want to say you are a people. You are a people. You are al allowed to have your right of self-determination. And the funny thing was that the first one who did it was actually a leader from the right wing in Israel, begging. In the agreement with Egypt, he accepted the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. The Palestinians, on the other hand, never accepted that the Jews have the right of self-determination. Because according to the Palestinian narrative, and there are some exceptions, of course, and some people who sit here, I don't know what they think about it. But according to the Palestinian narrative, there is no such thing as the Jewish people. If you read Abu Mazen's book, that didn't appear yet in English, unfortunately, it's called Zionism from the Beginning to End, he explains that actually the idea of a Jewish people was enforced on the Jews against their will by the colonial powers, mainly by the British, during the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th. The Jews didn't want to be a people. The colonial forces forced them to be a people. This is, of course, ridiculous, totally detached from reality, but this is what Abu Mazen writes in his book, and this is the Palestinian narrative. And this is why the Palestinians are not ready to have two states for two peoples if this means that the Jews will have a state of their own. And, uh, and this is the, the first element in seven elements of the, of the Palestinian narrative, seven pillars of the Palestinian narrative, that each one of them deals with the need to fight against Zionism, because Zionism, by its will to establish a state for the Jewish people here in Palestine, or as we call it, Eretz Israel, is some sort of a terrible injustice that cannot be tolerated. And uh, as long as this is the Palestinian narrative, to accept the idea of two states for two nations is unacceptable. So the Palestinians do say from time to time, when they are pushed to the corner, two states for two peoples. But if you ask them who are the two peoples, and this is something very interesting in the way everybody here referred to the problem already, they would say one state is, the, of course, the state of the Palestinian people. The other state is the state of the Israeli people, which is the people they have invented. There's no such thing as an Israeli people. There is a Jewish people, and there is Arab society, Arab people living in Israel. Most of them consider themselves Palestinians. They are part, a part of the Palestinian people. And uh, this is the way they see themselves. They don't see themselves as part of the Israeli people. They see themselves as part of the Palestinian people. So this huge difference between the understanding of the Jews in Israel of what does it mean two-state solution, which is two states for two peoples with mutual recognition, and the idea of the Palestinians about what is a two states for two peoples, what is a two state, sorry, is, is, a, is a gap that really at this point is unbridgeable. And because of that, uh, that was the reason why all the attempts until now failed. The idea of two states was first raised by the Peel Commission in 1937. This idea was to give the Palestinians almost 85% of the land and to give the Jews only less than 15%. The Jews had a very big quarrel amongst themselves what to do about it, and eventually they decided to take it. 
Even though this proposal, proposal didn't even give the Jews any, any of the holy sites, the Jews decided to take it. The Palestinians refused. Same happened with the partition plan in 1947. Two states, one Jewish, one Arab. At that time, they didn't use the term Palestinian. One Jewish, one Arab. Only limited part for the Jews, much bigger part for the Arabs. The Palestinians denied, they refused, not because they didn't uh, get enough, because they denied the idea of a Jewish state. And until today, all the efforts to find such a, an agreement that would include the idea of a Jewish state were refused by the Palestinians totally. And Abu Mazen says again and again, I'm not talking about Hamas. Of course, they, they are definitely the. But even Abu Mazen saying again and again, again, I have never and I shall never accept a Jewish state. And you know, the six points that Kerry and Obama presented to Abu Mazen about the creation of the two-state solution, point number one included reference to Israel as a Jewish state. And Abu Mazen said to uh, Obama, I'll come back to you. He never did. But when he came back to Ramallah, he stood in front of his audience and he told them in their own code in a way that they would understand what he means. He said, we stick to the treaty and we remain committed to the promise and there will be no concession and no compromise about the deposit. That's what he said his people, to his people. Which means, exactly as Meron said, that we remain committed to Haifa. We remain committed to Jaffa. We shall never give up our dream of getting these places back. And the crowd shouted back. In, uh, they clearly understood him. They shouted back. They say it in Arabic because it's rhyming. If I say it in English, I will translate it for you. Israel must know that there is no substitute for the right of return. The right of return of the refugees to their homes, to Jaffa, to Haifa, to Tiberia, to Safad, to all the places they were taken away from. So as long as this is the problem, we are far from solving the 48 problems. Far, far from solving the 48 problems. It's very difficult to understand how can we solve the 67 problems without solving the 48 problems. That's why it's very difficult in the context of the disagreement between Jews and Palestinians to find the two-state solution the way we are looking for, a two-state for two peoples. Yes. There is, on that background, there is a big debate inside the Jewish community. Since this is the case, since we cannot have a two-state for two peoples solution, what should we do? So I'm not going to enter what we are going to speak about in the next session, but the big debate in Israel is whether, since this is the case, should we look for some sort of a separation, as Meron just mentioned, or should we recognize the fact that the creation of a Palestinian entity, as long as the Palestinians are committed to their seven points, which include also commitment to all of Palestine, whether we should take into account that creation of a Palestinian state or Palestinian entity, independent entity here, is a danger for us. I want to clarify here. There are a lot of misperceptions. Meron said that the Oslo agreement was about building a Palestinian state. No, he then corrected himself and said, no, it didn't, it didn't include reference to that in the, in the agreement. This is totally untrue. This was the perception of the left in Israel, that this is the purpose of the Oslo agreement. But Rabin who was the prime minister at the time. In his last appearance before the Knesset, he explained very clearly what he had in mind when he signed the Oslo Agreement. He spoke about uh, some sort of an autonomy for the Palestinians, not about a state. And this is misrepresented about what did Rabin say. And what we see today is that the left in Israel is getting narrower and narrower. Why? Because more and more people understand that there's no point in uh, at these conditions to have a Palestinian state here. No reason for that. And because of that, the center and the center left in Israel are moving away from the idea of two states. It's the, the Labour Party, which is called today the Zionist camp, and it's the Yesh Atid. There is, there is a future represented by Yair Lapid, who are saying, we don't have a partner. 
we don't have a partner in the, on the Palestinian side. So we have to think about something different. And that's where the, this, the logic of this debate comes from. Thank you very much.